This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. And here is an interesting stitch. I'm calling it slant lace. It's a very simple stitch. And it is a lace stitch that I'm making with my brother, 965i. The pearl side of the lace looks like crochet. Very pretty, meshy look to it. And then the knit side of the lace looks a little bit almost like ribbing, but it's got holes in between the ridges. Now one of the things that's great about this is that a horizontally dyed self-striped yarn will give you these lovely diagonal lines. And this is a circle scarf. I have it all joined in a circle and it's been lightly blocked and it lies just beautifully. I am using self-striping sock yarn and you can use any good self-striping sock yarn you'll find it's lots of fun to see what sort of pattern emerges and you'll get these great diagonals. This scarf uses only 50 grams of sock yarn. Now I'm going to program this very simple pattern into the 965i. The first step is to press the input key and it displays the number 983 with the pattern number light lit. That means that the program is going to go in pattern number 983. And I'm going to press the step key and it's displaying that and then it wants to know how many stitches and how many rows. Step. The stitch light comes on and this pattern is just the stitch light comes on and this pattern is just two stitches wide. So I press the two button, then press the step key again, and it wants to know how many rows, up to a maximum of 998 rows, and it is two rows tall. Then I press the step key again, and I have an opportunity to put in row one. Row one is black, then white. That beep means that that's all of row one. Then I press the up arrow. Two displays next to the row light, and I can put in row two. Row two is just two white squares. One, two. That puts in the entire pattern. So I can press the input key again. Now, I still have to put the pattern in the machine in terms of telling it to select that pattern, 983, and tell it to the needles. So I'm going to press the step key and it displays the pattern number light and I put in that 983 which was the pattern. Then I press the step key. Now I've got it on selector 1 so I'm going to have this pattern all the way across. Press the step key three times until the ready light's displayed and that's all there is to programming. The needle arrangement is from needle number 20 left to number 21 right. So this is a total of 41 needles. And you can test the needle arrangement by sliding the lace curve across it once. It should select every other needle and have a needle unselected on each end. So that's one and two and the next row up will be the time to pass the lace carriage again. Or you can start it over by pressing the start button on the machine. Now you need to begin by casting on and knitting a few rows of waist yarn. So here I am putting on some pink waist yarn. I'm on tension 8. One of these wide brass weights is enough weight for this to get it started. Now you'll have to have some claw weights and move them with regularity as the lace forms. And I am bringing out the in-between needles now, double checking that I'm from 20 left to 21 right, and I'll knit a few rows. to end by doing the loop method of waist yarn. I pull down a loop on the left hand side and knit across and that will make it easier for me to, to get the waist yarn off when I finish the scarf. 
Now I ended with my carriage on the right, and it would have been nice if I'd ended with my carriage on the left. So I need to do a free pass. To do that free pass, I'll just push in my left part button, go across, and cancel that part button right away. Now I can begin the actual project. I'm putting the row counter on 0, 0, 0. Not because rows are important, but because I just want to see how many rows I can get out of my 50 grams of yarn. And I thread the machine and knit one row from left to right. And I'll hang a clothespin on that end. Now this lace is super simple. You go across and back with the lace carriage. First row selects needles. Second row moves all of those stitches over to the left by one stitch. Then you do two rows with main carriage. Two rows with lace carriage. Two with the main carriage. checking, make sure the tension's okay and everything's knitting through. And repeat, repeat, repeat. Now after I knit a little bit, in fact not very far at all, it will become apparent that this wants to slant. This is going to develop a point on this end and a point down here on the left hand side. So it'll be slanting and every so often I will be hanging a claw weight on the right hand edge and another claw weight on the left hand edge and I'll move them up every so often. Maybe every time they get two or three inches from the knitting I'll move them up again. Now what I'm going to do is keep knitting back and forth for a very long time. In fact, I'm going to keep knitting back and forth until I'm down to just my last couple yards of yarn. I'll come back on camera when I get there. Now I've knitted until I'm pretty close to out of yarn. And I'm going to end, now this is unusual, it's not what you usually do. I'm going to end by doing two passes with the lace carry. I've actually ended with doubled up stitches. I'm going to use the garter bar and flip all of this over. I'll start by bringing all of these needles out to hold position and I'm going to push all the stitches back behind the loops and all the way back. And I'm going to unthread the yarn so that it's not an impediment to my doing the flip. Now I really must get all of these latches open so I'm using a credit card that's been cut on an angle for that purpose. Then the garter bar has to go on with the grooves up. There's a little bump on this side. On this side, there's a groove. So I've got those grooves up. Also this long horizontal ridge, it's up. So I put it on so that every single one of these little circles, these little holes on the end of the garter bar, is on a hook. Then I come along again with my credit card and I close the latches. This is to make it a little easier for me to pull the knitting right up onto the garter bar. And I'm going to get my hand behind the knitting and pull it right on all the way across. And I'll poke it down so that these stitches are as far down on the posts as possible. And then I'm going to lift the garter bar off. I made a little move there to open all the hooks. I need the hooks open. Now I'm going to get all my, my weights off and pull this knitting out in between the two beds. I actually have a ribber attached here. At the right hand end of the knitting, I'm going to come up one loop short. That's normal. That happens with every hem that you pick up. It's a, you know, one stitch for each needle. The bottom of the knitting, which is what I'm picking up, has one less loop than the top of the knitting. Now what I need is a very, very loosely knitted row. So I'm going to bring these all out to hold position. And just to make them behave a little better, I'm going to put 
put a weight on. And I'm going to hand knit them back because I was on tension 8, so I can't really machine knit them back loose enough. And I will just knit this back through by hand very, very loosely. Now once they're all knitted through, I'm going to bring the needles back out to hold position. I do need to cut this yarn. And just holding the knitting down, I'll bring the needles out to hold position. And then I'm going to do a very simple loop through loop bind off using my latch tool. To do that loop through loop bind off, I'm going to put a loop on my hook slide in, get the second loop, and bring it through the first. So each time the new loop will be in the hook and the old loop will be below the hook. If I had not hand knitted that last row, this would be too tight and it would sort of shrink up and spoil the look of the scarf. So I'll just get that latched off and come right back. Here's the scarf joined, but I still have the waist yarn in place. Remember that loop that I had on the edge? If I cut that loop, that'll make it easy to pull the waist yarn off. I just get the other end and pull that right off so that that comes off. there. This is a remarkably good looking join. It blends right into the lace on the knit side and guess what? It doesn't even show all that much on the purl side. So that's how I put these together and here's my little circle scarf. Now it's not a huge scarf but it'll grow a little bit when I block it. I'll block it and come back on camera. So here's that finished lacy scarf, and this is the knit side, here's the purl side. I'm really very fond of the purl side as well as the knit side on this, and it turned out to be kind of a nice black, blue, and gray diagonal when it was knitted up. Very even. Most of this, this um, space dyed sock yarn comes out with very nice, even diagonal stripes in this pattern. 